Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's a few minutes after six. I'd like to call the regular meeting of Sumter County Council for Tuesday, August 9th to order. Ms. B, would you please give us an invocation? Let us all stand for the invocation and please remain standing for the pledge of allegiance. Let us pray. Our dear kind of Heavenly Father, we do acknowledge you as the one in whom we live, move, and have our being. We thank you for bringing us together again today for our committee meeting and for this, our regular meeting. We thank you for everyone who is present. And we just invite your presence and ask that you will help us to conduct the meeting in the way that you would have us to. We ask your continued blessings upon our men and women who are serving in uniform especially those who are serving in harm's way. And not only them, Father, but for those who uh, have been affected for having served and for our families that experienced loss because of their loved ones having served. We ask that you continue to be with them. And as we go through every item on our agenda, we ask that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and clarity of mind to make decisions according to your way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight we will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by a youth as retired Marine Corps veteran, Richard Martin, who served from June 1980 to April 2001. He currently lives in County Council District 3. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you, sir. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a motion to approve the agenda, please. So moved. Second. I move the property second to approve my agenda. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Any discussion? Aye. Uh, All in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. Aye. Uh, I have a motion to approve our minutes from so the regular meeting. Second, we move them probably the second that we approve our minutes. Any discussion? Any none on minutes from our regular meeting for Tuesday, July 26th? Yeah. Is approved. Land use matters with Ruben RZ 2207. Good evening, Helen Reedman for planning staff. Uh, RZ 2207 is at 4510 U.S. Highway 15 South. The applicant is Mr. Patrick James, is the authorized agent for the property owner. This request is to rezone a 2.35 acre portion of a larger 29 acre tract from agricultural conservation to limited commercial. Uh, this is the property in question, highlighted in red, it's the entire 29 acres. The 2.35 acres on the front, you'll see uh, striped in yellow or in white and red. Uh, the property is currently zoned agricultural conservation, as is everything around it. Uh, it's currently uh, primarily undeveloped, with the exception of this patch that you see here. This is actually an approved cemetery um, that Mr. James and his family had approved several years ago. Uh, they would like to move their funeral home business to be right in front of this cemetery location. Uh, the request to rezone it from agricultural conservation to limited commercial is just a personal preference. In the AC zoning district, you can do funeral homes and crematories. 
but it is a conditional use process. They are seeking this approval uh, to limit a commercial uh, in an effort to streamline getting approval for funding um, for the property. It's just a little bit easier for them to do that with a commercial designation with underwriters than an agricultural designation. Uh, so as you can see, they did have a preliminary survey done where they show kind of how this layout works. Uh, it would not include any portion of the property that's currently part of the cemetery, as cemeteries are not allowed in the limited commercial district. That would remain in the AC district. They would only abide by this area in the front, where they are purposely leaving a 60-foot strip that goes back to the larger acreage tract, which keeps that as a compliant parcel under the agricultural zoning district with proper road frontage. Uh, this would become a separate fee simple lot. When we look at zoning requests, we actually look at comprehensive plan designations. In this particular instance, it is in the rural development planning area. Uh, it supports low density residential development and selected non residential um, uses that are supportive of that low density residential development. This applicant's request really does not comply with comprehensive plan. Um, simply because this is not at a primary crossroads. Um, there really aren't any major crossroads in this area. It is adjacent to the intersection of Timmerman Street and 15 South, though, which is the entrance to a neighborhood. Planning Commission did recommend approval of this request, uh, although rezoning from AC to limited commercial is not submitted to, supported by the plan. The applicant's proposed use is allowed in the LC district. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Um, and having been involved in, in the AC and conditional uses in AC, and you mentioned, yeah, this does fall into one of the conditional uses. So it does not really need a rezoning to do what he wants to do. Um, the process is he has to go get two thirds of the. Uh, so I, believe it's a straight, I think it's a straight conditional use. I don't believe it's a signature requirement. It's not even a signature requirement? I don't believe so. I don't see his claim about expediting anything or helping alone. If it gets approved, it gets approved. And that's all he needs to take to a lender. But I, I, I'm going to be in a boat. Just... Okay. Um, so the next Hearing none, what is the all in favor of having first reading on RZ2207? Please say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. I'm sorry? Nay. Uh, RZ first reading 2207 is approved. <coughs> Ordinance number 22978. The next two ordinances, uh, we will have public hearings prior to council taking uh, action on second reading. Uh, we will have a public hearing. Mr. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Council, uh, you have a public hearing and have a second reading on this ordinance to approve uh, the piece of property on. Manning Avenue to the city of Sumter. The city wants to use it for a, a park, I mean, a, a, an art park. <coughs> we by chance have the aerial photography of that. Who has that? Uh, no, I was thinking of tax matters. So. Anyway, that's the letter. That's what Mr. Blaney has a letter from. Uh, which is pointing to Mr. Nixon about the uh, request to uh, turn this into an art park. Um, is that taking questions <coughs> prior to public hearing? Any questions? All right. I now have a clear public hearing. Well, I was trying to do. We not, we not, you were looking for an aerial map to show where it actually was. Is that what you I think we had that last time. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's. It's on the corner of Orange Street and Manning Avenue. At one, at one time, there was a service substation there. There was a modular room office there, and a modular office was removed. It's now a vacant lot. That's where it was. Public hearing on uh, orders number 22978 is now open. Anyone wishing to speak for or against 
This ordinance please proceed to the podium, state your name for the record. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. No problem. All right, we move to properly second look at the recap meeting on ordinance 22978. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Yeah. All opposed? The same. Ordinance 22978 is approved. Ordinance 22979. Mr. Chairman, you'll have a public hearing and then perhaps second reading. 22979 is an ordinance to approve the finished piece of property at 530 A South Sumter Street to the adjoining property owner, which is the Sumter County Community Development Corporation. And you've probably seen that letter from Greg Clyburn, the director of the Community Development Corporation, indicating that they are interested in acquiring that to uh, uh, put a, an affordable duplex or something like that on it. And be good since they own the adjoining lot to be able to combine those and do something uh, consistent with their mission. Uh, this property was just given to Suffolk County because the prior owner was tired of paying taxes and keeping it maintained. So uh, he contacted Chris Hildish. And uh, the gentleman I worked it out, I sent him a deed, got it signed, I got a recording. That's how we ended up with it. And we, uh, Chris reached out to Clyburn and she indicated to me that she used it. That's the backstory. Okay. Public hearing for Ordinance 22979. It's now open. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this ordinance, please proceed to the podium. State your name for the record. Seeing none, second. Second. We move and properly second that we approve ordinance number 22979. Any further discussion? Anyone all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Ordinance 22979 is approved. Come now to committee reports. Land use committee, Mr. Eves. Our land use committee did uh, meet this afternoon, and uh, we only had one item on the agenda that was discussed was on uh, national flood maps. And from FEMA, we had uh, suggested uh, parks and South Carolina Department of Natural Resources come over and brief us a little bit on it again and, and have a uh, we're going to give us some more information on it. Basically, trying to educate us a little bit more so we'll know enough about it to make a decision when the time comes. Uh, we supposedly have until October 27th to adopt this map or not, I guess. But uh, it was a good meeting, I think. And, you know, picked up some new information every time we discuss this. It, it can get complicated. But uh, anyway, just for information, no action was taken. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Report from council members on other meetings, trainings, and our conferences. Any monthly reports, Ms. Brandon? Council, on tomorrow, the building um, department will be having its meeting, and I sent you all some information concerning that. Um, also, the summer youth work program was um, closing ceremony was last night. And um, although council members had, uh, several council members had um, meetings yesterday, I did want you all to know that Ms. Pizza Rogers did an outstanding job in, in um, having the program. And these are all, all the students from the program on last evening. And they really had a nice time, and we enjoyed ourselves as well. But um, I do want you to know that uh, we have most students, there was a student from each of the council district, but we definitely have um, a, a bit more than um, in the county area. And they had a new way of pronouncing names for Mr. Arthur Artie Baker. And um, they would not just call you Artie, they called you Mr. Arthur oh. Artie Baker. And Mrs. Dayton and Mr. Washington, and of course, Mr. Um, Mrs. McGainey had a large group as well, and um, Mr. Virgin did as well, and there were several from y'all's area as, as well. But it was a very nice affair, and um, they had even a skit and some other things that they did, but most importantly, they were able to tell just what they 
learned from working in each department. So it was well attended and well organized. And we thank and they all thank you all for allowing for those funds to be there. I want to take this opportunity to thank Ms. Rogers. I did get an opportunity to speak to the group. Uh, they were very well uh, behaved, very attentive to what I had to say. I talked to them about uh, what type of government uh, we have here in Suffolk County. And they asked some very interesting questions as well. So good job, Ms. Rogers. Let me go back up. I skipped a couple of them. Golfing, thank you, Council Member, that's interested in that. Please let me know. And the Tandem Health will be having a um, ribbon cutting on August the 18th at 5 o'clock. But what they're doing is they're opening up the business center in case anyone might be interested in attending. And Ms. Rogers, just like I did when I spoke to him, I actually had left and came back and spoke to them on the importance of registering to vote when they become of age and also getting their parents and family members to vote. So since most of them were in the rural areas, hopefully uh, I talked them into becoming voting members of your constituency. So, uh, <laughs> They, they received it pretty well. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I want to thank you for your work in the rural area. Much <laughs> yeah. appreciated. County Administrator's Report, Mr. Mason. Mr. Chair, Council Members, good evening. If you'll indulge me, I would like to thank the Council Members for their work. Uh, I think they did a very good job. Uh, I would like to, uh, Ms. Rogers, of course, is here. Uh, last night was a wonderful program. It was well put together, well organized. Uh, so I'm certainly impressed with Ms. Rogers' skills as a always am, but uh, even so, the students, uh, the young adults, and that's what they all are teaching. Uh, they certainly impressed all of us uh, in the audience. Good many of the people there were obviously their parents. And as you look around the room, I could see the proud faces of many of the parents uh, that were there and witnessed uh, what, uh, as, as Ms. Rogers indicated last night, wasn't necessarily in the comfort zone of many of the uh, students. but. That being said, I have two items to mention. I want to bring, if it's okay, I know Ms. Riders, I'm putting you on the spot, but I do want you to, if you would, just spend a few minutes explaining the entire program because there, it was more than about more than just about uh, being employed by Southern County in our offices. There were opportunities for them to learn other things, and Ms. Rogers, of course, put it here. So, Lisa, putting you on the spot. I'm sorry, okay. but you're probably used to that. I am. Good evening. Um, the program allowed the students to work 16 hours a week for four weeks in various departments. And on Fridays for four hours, they had mentoring sessions. So we had the chairman of county council come in, and he spoke to them about the county form of government, how that form of government was established, how Sumter County was actually one of the first to have the um, council administrator forms of government, and about the history of that. Then we had Ms. Kim Getty from the Clerk of Courts office come in, and she gave the students a tour of the Judicial Center. Then we went over to Summary Court, and Judge Gordon and Judge Gamble both took time out of their schedules. They divided the um, students into two groups, and they took those students on a tour, answered questions for them, and also gave them some insight um, on being leaders in our community. We had Dr. Jessica Green come in and speak to them about mental health and wellness. Dr. Green was a participant in the Summer Youth Employment Program years ago, and now she practices in the um, Horry County area. We had Kimberly Diamond come and speak to the students about leadership skills, being positive, and speaking positive affirmations. We also had Ms. Santana G who talked to them about choices and consequences and um, the, the power of being positive and making sure your life goes in the direction that you choose because we all have choices to make and we live with the choices that we make. Um, 
I'm sure I'm missing somebody. The sheriff's office closed us out, and um, they had several employees from each division come and talk to them about the different things that the sheriff's office is responsible for. Um, he put me on the spot, so I'm sure I'm missing someone. Um, charge it to my head and not my heart. Uh, one of the things that I was going to do, so I am grateful for this opportunity. One thing we talked about was personal responsibility. Admitting when you're wrong when you make a mistake. So I have to raise my hand. I made a mistake. I left one of the participants out last night um, when I was reading the letters of recommendation. And I asked her after 9 o'clock last night, if you can please, please come to County Council meeting, I promise I'll make it up to you. Mm -hmm. And she was dressed so beautifully last night, and she's just coming from practice, so she's not um, as prepared as she was last night. She said she doesn't want to say anything, but Miss <laughs> Adriana Weeks, if you would come on up, and I'll read her letter if you'll end up in this one on. To whom it may concern. Adriana Weeks worked with various departments at Sumter County Summary Court, including assisting as needed. She was a tremendous help to me and the other clerks in this office. This letter is from Mr. Zestra McFadden, who is the court administrator here. Ms. Weeks exceeded expectations and was always willing to do whatever we requested her to do with a smile on her face. Ms. Weeks came to work on time she was a quick learner and was eager to learn. She observed and assisted in court sessions and even stayed after hours to observe evening court. Ms. Weeks had such a positive attitude, was such a joy to have in our office. The consensus was with the staff that she is deserving of the performance award based on how well she worked in each department and her pleasant Ms. Weeks also deserves the Leadership Award because she would take initiative to assist in all areas of summer report. Whatever she would complete a task, she would ask for more work to do in order to stay consistently busy. She worked well with everyone here and wanted to learn as much as she could in the short amount of time she was with us. Ms. Weeks exemplified great leadership qualities, such as reliability, trustworthiness, and the ability to work on her own without supervision. Lastly, Ms. Weeks absolutely deserves the Citizenship Award. Based on everything shared above, that alone makes her a great citizen. But to add to that, this young lady never came in the office with a negative attitude and she always was helpful to anyone who needed assistance. All great characteristics of an awesome citizen. This young lady would be an asset to any agency. She is welcome at summary court anytime. We wish her the very best in her future endeavors. Ms. And my council person is Ms. Vivian McGinnis. <laughs> Thank you. And we also have Jalea Brunson here, who is also a participant in the program, and she received um, accolades. And um, someone wrote an extensive letter of recommendation for her. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Rogers, uh, that was just a small, small sample of what the program was about last night. Uh, so many positive comments from our department heads. Um, you didn't mention the age range. I was rather impressed with the, the age range. 14 to 17. 14 to 17 year olds. So uh, sometimes as we uh, work in the environments we all work in, sometimes we question what the, the youth might uh, be prepared for in the future. But I can honestly say, based on what I saw last night, what a great day. There are a lot of strong, strong kids in our community that promises many things in the future. That's for sure. Um, the, the last item I want to cover, uh, I would like to inform council. I'm going to try to do this right away. It's up on the screen here. 
But uh, I have want to inform council that I have the distinct honor to have been appointed by the president of the South Carolina Senate, uh, Mr. Alex, Senator Alexander, to the South Carolina Opioid Recovery Fund Board, uh, one of nine members uh, to be selected and confirmed by the governor. Um, we've had one meeting so far. Uh, anticipate that we'll have uh, at least a couple more for the end of the year. Primary responsibility of this board is to distribute funds that uh, South Carolina will receive from the opioid litigation. Uh, so each county uh, in South Carolina will get a certain allotment, um, and uh, then there will be some discretionary funds that can be distributed to other programs uh, in the community. Uh, so there'll be an application process that people can form and apply. Uh, as long as the counties meet the criteria for these funds is automatic. So the county's first portion will be roughly $90,000, uh, but this will be ongoing um, for many years to come. Uh, so we will uh, obviously put some things in place from our, from our county, but also do it from the other counties and other agencies across the state. So that will be a primary responsibility of this board. And so that's a distinct honor and a privilege to serve in this capacity, not only the state that certainly represents some of the county. Just on the phone council. Congratulations. Good show. Good show. Come down to the public comment portion of our agenda. Citizens desiring to speak to any to no more than three minutes. Comments are to be made through the chairman of South County. Anyone wishing to speak to council, please proceed to the podium and state your name for the record. Public comment portion of our agenda is now open. Seeing now, public comment is now closed. Move for adjournment. Second. We move the proper segment that we adjourn the discussion. All the time. Adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you for your attendance.